Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. In the last episode, you saw me working on the back room or the second living room that was plastered, painted and the flooring was put down. So let me show you what I've been up to since then. Hi guys, so obviously I've had a change of hair colour, which you will see many different shades, I'm sure, over the next couple of months as the blonde sucks the colour out. But moving on... I'm in the back room again, trying to sort out everything that I need to before the new sofa gets delivered. So it's currently Friday and the sofa is due on Monday and I've left everything totally last minute and should have been ordering the skirting boards earlier on in the week to get them out of the way before the sofa arrives. So because I've left it too late and I forgot that I'm actually out tomorrow during the day, and can't take a delivery. The skirting boards now aren't coming until Monday, which is the day that the sofa comes. So I've completely screwed myself over. Made a start on sanding this wall, trying to fix the bumpy plaster. So here and here is where the chimney was. And this is where there seems to be like a little bit of an issue with the texture. And you can see it sort of like sticks out at the top. So. I'm going to try and do a little bit more of this sanding and get the areas filled in that I need to. I'm debating whether I'm going to keep this floor down. As I've been over here, I noticed that there's a bit of a bounce on this bit, which is where I filled in where the chimney was. I don't know if that sounds like it's wet. There's like gaps coming in already it didn't lock well lock together very well so i'm gonna to have to pull some of this up now to see what's going on in this middle spot so i figured out the issue the floor has blown and raised up underneath that particular bit and um, it was just on the edge so i'm gonna to have to chip away at that and fill it in with some underlay and relay it i think this probably happened because i didn't prime the floor first so that was a rookie mistake Hopefully now that this is pulled up, there won't be any further damage. So I had been struggling with my old saw, so I decided to go and buy a compound sliding saw, which is much better for skirting boards this size because it cuts all the way through. So this was, I think, £99 from Screwfit. Quite easy to put all the pieces together. So hopefully I'll have a little bit better luck with this saw than I was doing with my previous one. I usually try and do 45 degree cuts in the corners, which isn't really the right way to do it. You should be sort of stenciling out like this and then using a coping saw to be able to get the pieces to fit together just like that. So I bought a coping saw and decided to give this a try. This is mega tricky to do. Um, definitely takes a lot of practice. I was really struggling here and it also helps if you're not having to cut a massive piece of skirting board that isn't supported, doing it in this haphazard way like I am. So yeah, it was tricky to do, um, but a little bit better than previously. I'm literally so stupid. When I ordered the skirting board, I wanted it to match up as close as possible to the other piece that was already up. And when it arrived this morning, um, I looked at it, I was like, oh, I've not ordered the same pattern. So I've been cutting and fixing with that profile. And just as I've been cutting out, doing the coping, I've noticed that there's also this profile, which is the profile that I needed, which I didn't realise until I just turned it the opposite way around. So that's going to be much easier to cut out as well. So I'm going to have to redo it. So there is a much better cut with that saw. Um, I think that's why I was having so many issues with skirting boards in the past. So I've cut a 45 degree mitre on this piece, which needs joining up to another smaller piece. Yesterday, I had to do a straight cut um, and patch it up. The right way to do it is at an angle, which I've just done there. So I'm gonna get grab adhesive on, and then once that's secured, measure out the next piece and get this awkward corner done. Come on, Jasper, move. So I, I 
don't want to put mechanical fixings on this because it's going on top of the laminate it's just going to be really messy for someone to take the skirting boards off if the laminate needs to come up so i'm just using grab adhesive and then i'm going to secure in temporarily with some screws unscrew the screws fill in the holes sand and paint just to make life easier for either myself or someone else in the future not having to rip out screws from the wall So I think we're going to be calling this video how not to fit skirting boards. I ended up having a major meltdown whilst I was trying to do them and I'm definitely not the best person to be doing a step-by-step -step guide. There are loads of videos on YouTube of how to do it properly. It's just one of those things I think that I just do not have the patience for. I need to learn how to use the saw properly and it has become a little bit of a mess and I could also do with having an angle finder. The external corner around near the door has been completely butchered and has been filled in a little bit with cork. Need some more filling and sanding to get these horrible corners sorted. Um, they're not square at all and I was just wanting to get it finished. I managed to get the sofa delivery put back a couple of days. I'm not sure I'm 100% happy with it. It's a lot more square and modern than what I would usually go for. The sole reason that I went with this one was because it was the cheapest one that I could find. Even second-hand corner sofas on Facebook Marketplace that were half decent were around a thousand pounds which is the cost of this one and yeah i didn't want to go spending sort of like two three thousand pounds on a sofa for it to potentially not fit in my next house the great thing about having sort of like two and three seater sofas is that they generally can fit in but when it comes to corner sofas each room is so different and yeah it's just not really a good investment so i don't regret getting it but i just think i'm struggling now as to how i want to move forward with the room because i do like quite classic older vintage furniture pieces and with the sofa being so modern i just don't know how i'm going to get all of this to tie in and i'm just really struggling with where i'm going with the whole sort of concept and decor for this room I don't like things being really neutral. I do like having a pop of colour or pattern. So I wanted to put a wallpaper on that back wall just to give the room a little bit of dimension. I've picked up so many wallpaper samples and individually some of them I do really like but I just don't think that they're going to work. I really like bold sort of wallpapers out of all of them this is standing out at me as being one that i really like but i just don't know whether that's going to be too dark for this room this was another one that i thought was really pretty but i don't think that that's the right style to go with the sofa i do love a damask wallpaper but again i'm not sure that's going to go with the style of the sofa i do quite like these sort of are they like concrete effects you know like with the sort of different color patterns in them but again i think those ones are too dark that's a bit too green and bright so then i managed to find this one which is a little bit more sort of like greeny but then i don't really like the thickness on the paper and it is quite metallic this is a lovely damask, but again, with the style of it, I think had I gone with a more traditional sofa, this would have been lovely. But it is a very similar colour to the sofa as well, and I just don't think it's really going to stand out. You feel like I'm in a little bit of a predicament now as to what I'm going to do with the room. Another option is maybe panelling the wall, but again... <laughs> I don't know whether that's really what I want to go for. I just, I don't know what to do. 
and I would love to get some ideas and inspiration off people. If you can give me some suggestions down in the comments, it would be greatly appreciated. In terms of in here, what I still left to do, I still need to sort out around these door frames. I'm really sort of like puzzled as the best way to go about this. So again, any suggestions, please let me know. I can't do this part of the skirting board until the architraves are on. I did go and pick up a new TV for in here. So I have been trying to sit in here a little bit. I just brought in the lamp from the front room. Again, didn't want to go out buying any cushions until I've decided if I'm going to pick a colour out with the wallpaper. I'm feeling a little bit uninspired with this room at the moment because it's not really turning out how I'm liking it to, but it doesn't help that I didn't have a vision before I started doing it. Please let me know if you've got any suggestions or if there's any of the wallpapers that you particularly thought would go really well in here. I want to try and get rid of that table soon because I don't think that the dark wood in here is helping. I think if I'm gonna go for wood, it definitely needs to be sort of like a really white, stained, washed, light oak maybe, I don't know give me some ideas guys please help me out and i will get on with painting and sorting out the skirting boards in here and then trying to figure out what i do with those door frames in the next video so thanks very much for watching guys and i will see you soon